wanted to tell us about correlation. Yeah, so thank you for giving me a chance to present the work I have done with uh, my supervisor Marek Kush. So essentially it's going to be about more of my PhD thesis, which I hope I will defend sometime this year. Uh, we also hope. Hmm? We also do hope for that. Okay, <laughs> for some reasons. Okay, so let me first give you the outline of the talk. First, I will define the problem. I mean, I will define what I mean by correlations exactly. Uh, then I will discuss by linear or quadratic Cartesian detection of so defined correlations. Uh, uh, in the next part, I will discuss uh, well, typical properties of uh, well, those correlations on sets of typical isospectral density matrices. Uh, in the last part, I will briefly uh, or mention general k-linear criteria for detection of correlations. Um, so, what is our setup? So, we consider arbitrary Hilbert space H. Uh, I don't assume at this point anything about it. Uh, I have the set of all mixed states, mixed states are on this uh, quantum system. And I have a set of pure states. I will denote them by D1 of H. Um, this is just the notation. And uh, I have some subclass uh, of those pure states, which I denote by M. And the rest of the talk, that will be always M. Uh, and I, can, uh, I, I call them non correlated states for some reason. This is just the name at this moment. Uh, then, uh, I define the set of like, arbitrary uh, well, non correlated states as just a convex hull of this, uh, of this set of uh, states in the set of density matrices. That is, I take uh, well, just convex mixtures of those pure states. Okay? So the, the picture is as follows I, I have this D1 of H uh, like on the boundary of this uh, central region. Okay? M is here. I uh, take all convex combinations, so I get this set, and I call uh, this set a set of non-correlated states. Okay. Does that mean that you may have different uncorrelated states? I mean, it depends upon the class M, and I will. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, it says some class. Yeah, I think there can be many of them. Right? Yeah, sure. So I mean, since for each each are defined is splitting into two subsystems, then of course M is not unique. Yeah, and that's what I'm Yeah, I just, I, did, I mean, the, the, the class of non parameter states depends upon this class M, which so I. So that means that some of the states which belong to D of H, according to one classification, may be um, correlated. But D of H is the set of system. all the instruments. Yeah, okay. okay. So, there, there so there this whole simple region here represents... Yeah, you don't know what I'm going to ask. So let me finish the question that you will move about. Sure. Otherwise, it's rather impossible to conclude everything. Uh, that, that because M is arbitrary, yeah. then I may have a different ends. Sure. And according to one of the end states, maybe in uncorrelated. Yes. Exactly. Yes. 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 Exactly. So. Take uh, the hydrogen atom and two sets of variables. One is position of each particle. The other is a relative coordinate and the center of mass. In one uh, set of variables, there is a correlation. In the other, not. So at this point, I did not specify M. I will in a second. So don't worry about it. Uh, so. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Uh, so, uh, so obviously, set of correlated states is just a complement of the set of uncorrelated states, right? Uh, so, so it's just this yellow region here, and we ask like general questions, like well, we want to characterize the set of correlated states. That is, like someone gives me a mixed state, I want to decide whether it is inside this uh, convex fight M or it is outside. Okay, so whether it is correlated or not. So in general, it turns out to be a very difficult problem, but we can restrict ourselves to like a simple problem. Maybe we, we, we just want to have criteria for correlations. That is, 
we may have a function of on set of density matrices that has the property that, for instance, well, when it's like positive, then I can conclude that I am outside of this uh, blue region. Another question I will address later on the talk in the talk is the problem of like typical typicality of correlations. Um, well, I will ask how 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 generic are like correlated states in the set of all density matrices. Okay, so let me now move to concrete examples I will study during this talk. So, first example is just uh, the, pro the problem of entanglement. So I have a system of L distinguishable particles. Uh, <coughs> Hebrew space is as follows. Uh, the class of pure states is just the class of product states. And uh, in this setting, uh, by uh, correlated states, I, I just recover usual entangled states, okay? And I, at this point, I'd like to stress uh, that uh, this problem, in general, is a very hard problem for, uh, I mean, the, the problem of characterization of the set is a difficult one because it's NP-hard. I mean, it's some, uh, NP-hard means like it's d uh, difficult from uh, complexity theory point of view. Okay? Uh, so, not, so. Not conceptually, but numerically. Numerically, but yeah. So, this is like the motivation why I don't want like to uh, precisely describe the set, I mean, to give the recipe whether a state is correlated or not. Uh, I just focus on criteria, okay? On detection problem. Uh, in the rest of the talk. Okay, that, that, that's the, the one setting. Another setting is like I have fixed number of bosons, say L bosons, with single particle Hilbert space H. Uh, okay, and the class of my. Excuse me. Yeah? I'm, I'm slow in understanding values of things. But the words bosonic and fermionic, they apply to the undistinguishable part. Not distinguishable particles. Yeah, that's why that's, this yeah, is yeah, another yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Here I have distinguishable particles, here I have bosonic and fermionic ah. systems, which is systems consisting of non-distinguishable uh, particles. Okay, so I consider a system... No, so you haven't defined what is the entanglement for the distinguishable No, but I consider a different problem now. Okay. So, so, so this I line I can ignore. Pardon? So I can forget about this first line on this. No, line. I mean I. The <laughs> point. So different problems. So uh, the, sir, problem of the problem is. We are not going to discuss sides. the first one. No, the, okay. the, t the title of my talk is like the unified approach. So I will address those questions okay. at the same time, okay. okay? And I will present a method that is capable of, uh, well, say something about each of those situations at the same time. So that's the point of my talk. So. I have a system of, uh, of L bosons, and the class of non correlated states is just a class of like, product uh, bosonic states. And one can argue, I mean, according to some definition, the, uh, the, the, this, consists, this class consists of uh, non entangled uh, bo uh, bo bo bosonic states. Okay? I mean, non correlated, but like. Uh, people who do quantum metrology, at least what I know, I mean, they consider those states, I mean, the non created states in this setting as states um, that actually uh, d d don't give you anything better for the, the, the purpose of metrology. Okay. Uh, okay, another class, uh, I have like L fermions, and the, the class of pure states consists of. Uh, stated determinants. So this is a natural class that pops out, I don't know, in Hartree-Fock theory, for instance. And these are, well, the simplest tensors I have uh, at hand in this uh, in so this space. The slower one is the stated determinant. Yeah, this is what I said. Just. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, I like this complicated expression. Oh, ah, okay. Uh, I mean, I, I, I wanted to make them as simple as possible, but, okay. 
so 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 the so the next uh, class I, I consider is well the class that you all know just optical coherent states. Okay, so I don't I, I just class I mean to some definitions of classical states right. Okay, so we, I don't have to I, I, I guess dwell more on that. So the last class I will address in this talk is the class of. But maybe it's good to say that this which are then then co uh, uh, uncorrelated in this yeah. case. Uh, these fixed states are those which have this positive p representation. Uh, that uh, don't have the positive. They don't have. They don't have the positive p representation. Okay. So the, the last class is a class of. Uh, uh, oh, I just come back for a second to the previous one. I forgot to mention that here, when this h zero uh, is c just c two, I recover the well known uh, spin coherent states, s u two coherent states. So many classes. I mean, about here. Uh, so the last, the last class is the class of so-called Ga Ga uh, Gaussian fermionic states. Uh, they pop up, uh, they, they, they are present like in the <coughs> Bogolubov theory, uh, Bogolubov uh, mean field theory. So, so my Hilbert space now is just that the Fock, fermionic Fock space uh, with single particle Hilbert space CD, and I. My, my class consists of uh, the vacuum which is moved by arbitrary so-called Bogolubov transformation. Okay. Uh, other example which one can consider, I mean, uh, are coherent squeeze states or Gaussian states, but I will not address them in this talk. But essentially, the same framework will be also valid for them. Okay, so I defined, I mean, my classes. Let me now move like to the uh, hard part of the talk. So, so I, I seek for a function which detects correlations, okay, so which is positive for correlated states. I mean, it obviously depends upon the class, but I fix the class. Uh, so I, I demand it to have simple algebraic expression. I mean, I want it to be easily computable. Maybe as some expectation value of some operator. Uh, I want it to be invariant under symmetries of the problem. <coughs> so imagine this, this class M has some symmetries uh, which uh, are represented by some group acting on this Hilbert space. I want this this fa this function my criterion to be invariant under this this class of operations. Um, I also want it to be continuous and traversed under some small perturbation of input states. So at the very beginning you must tell what are, which are the correlated states. And then so, you see... Yeah, so but, uh, for each class I, uh, I give such a criterion. And this is actually the main result, uh, uh, one of the main results I'm going to talk about. So. So, so for each of presented examples, I provide a function which is, say, quadratic in row in the density matrix, uh, which, which fulfills those properties. Uh, and what is, which, what, what is funny, it depends only on, so to say, algebraic structure of, of M. I will discuss it later on, what it means. OK? Uh, yeah. So, so the, the, the work I'm talking about is like based on the work I, I've done in CFT ba basically during my PhD. So these are three papers that co concern the same topic, uh, similar topic, let's say. Uh, but why I, uh, I, I just want to first discuss why I uh, stick to quadratic witnesses or to quadratic criteria. Uh, so in general, uh, in entanglement theory, uh, we've got so-called entanglement witnesses, which is uh, well, which are just operators that have uh, the property that if I take such a trace, say when expectation value of this v uh, w is uh, is positive, then I conclude that row is entangled. So why why I don't take such uh, operators? Uh, or such uh, such witnesses. Well, in general, from Hunt Banach theorem, it follows that whenever I have a convex set, I can uh, in in my 
set of density matrices, I can always do that. I can always find family of, of such witnesses that detect my, my uh, the whole, uh, with help of which I can describe the whole set. But in general, for, uh, I, I don't have the structure theory of, of such witnesses for given M. I, I have such a structure theory for the separability problem for entanglement, uh, but for all those classes, I don't have it. Okay, so. Uh, what is also important, I think, that because it is somehow not flat at the bottom, yeah. you have you need infinite, infinite number of them. Yeah, it's not a polytope. I, 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 yeah, it's a complicated set. Uh, also, when my symmetry group acts reducibly on my Hilbert space, uh, then this, this V, I, I mean, uh, I cannot impose uh, the in invariance under uh, symmetries. Because, I mean, if this function would be invariant, then by sure lemma, this V has to be like uh, well, identity essentially. So it's, it's empty. Okay, so. No, no, not necessarily. It depends on the symmetry. So if, uh, if it is represented irreducibly on my Hilbert space. Ah, irreducible? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So okay. always. Divide here by the space yeah. Yeah. in the block when this symmetry acts. Okay, but this is just the motivation. I mean, why I, why I, bother, why I bother about, uh, about nonlinear witnesses. Uh, right, so let me move to some re results we've got. Uh, so now my criteria would be non linear. You should obviously make this operator W is called witness. And just the name. <laughs> because yeah. it, it testifies that yeah. you can imagine this in the following. You have a convex set and a single state. Okay? And if the state is outside of this of this set, these are two convex sets which can be then uh, uh, separated by a linear function. Now this is exactly Hanbana theorem or something which is immediate consequence of Hanbana theorem. And, and uh, because, of, because all such, uh, such uh, uh, linear functionals you can write as the traces of some Hermitian operator in this case with this, this. So in a sense, it testifies that this particular state is outside of the set. Okay? So this what is it's it's indicator of the particular convex set. This, not, not, this is no. rather, no. rather you have to look at this, that you have this set given, and this is the indicator that some state yeah. is outside of this it's set. Outside. So, so it's yeah. a one, so it's a one plus yes. in some sense. Yes. So it's, yeah. so it's in this double jumbo, it's not a projected one minus one. So can I, can I move further, sir? Uh, so, from now on, I will so consider non-linear. I mean, to. At, at this point, I don't worry about the names. I want to, consider, to discuss results. So, uh, so, uh, so from now on, I will consider non-linear criteria. So uh, they will be given by some operator capital B that acts on two copies of my Hilbert space. This is some auxiliary construction, and you don't, I mean, uh, I mean, my criteria will be expressed in terms of this V, but you should not worry about it. I mean, this is just the, uh, oh, how things are. Okay, so, <coughs> so uh, the, the first fact is that, okay, uh, I, don't, I don't want to, like, to, to, to read the equations, but I mean, it's actually pretty simple. So, uh, Assume that I have some capital B that has a property. Uh, if I squeeze it with uh, brass and kex when of this form, when B is in M and W is arbitrary state in H, and I have this inequality, okay? So assume I have it for for arbitrary B and arbitrary W. Then by the linearity of this expression in V and W. I can conclude, now listen, that for every uh, non-correlated uh, non state, state row and for arbitrary positive B, I have this inequality, okay? So maybe forget about that 
focus on that. So, so I have the following. Uh, if I plug here uh, some non-correlated state rho and arbitrary positive non-negative b, I have such an, such an inequality. Okay. Uh, so now, whenever uh, I can find non-negative b such that for given rho uh, such expression is positive, then I can conclude that this rho is correlated. Okay, that's simple algebraic fact. Okay, so uh, now the, the whole story is about construction of this capital. Really, that really is this just a name. It's just it's just a name. So anything with our notion of correlation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so that's so if you if you set and you call yeah. it correlated, it has yeah. nothing to do with correlation. True, but in, you no, maybe no, you can no, argue there, that. There so in each of those settings. So I just uh, because in all those cases, sir, sir, because I want to treat all those cases at the same footing, yeah. I I have to pick some name. So I pick this one, maybe I can pick another one. But even in those examples, correlations meant something else, not just correlations in the usual sense when you have two subsystems. True. Uh, true. I, I, I admit I just I have just chosen the name. Uh, yeah, but but so I the only assumption is that uncorrelated states are convex set. Yeah. This yeah. Is yeah. The, 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 at, at this point, at this point, yes. At this point, this is the important point only. Yeah, but now I add some structure. Okay. So uh, I want to construct this capital V. Okay. So. Uh, the observation is as follows. Uh, okay, in each of uh, those cases I, I mentioned, uh, this class M is given by the following. We call that M are this pure uncorrelated. Yeah, this, the, the set of pure uncorrelated states is given by such a uh, okay quadratic or like uh, yeah, quadratic condition or uh, yeah. So so expectation value of some. Uh, Okay, I get. I, I have operator A. Okay, operator A uh, acts on two copies of the Hilbert space as well. So it is some projector uh, on the subspace of the uh, well symmetric tensor power of H. Okay, uh, yeah, some some projector. And I, d uh, I define my class of pure states by such a condition. Okay, so I demand that uh, this expectation value vanishes for the class of pure non-correlated states. <coughs> uh, so it turns out that okay, whenever I have such a, okay, I can construct capital B. Uh, that fulfills assumptions of the of this fact from the previous uh, from the previous uh, transparency. Okay, so in other words, okay, I start my class M is given by this A. Then uh, I define B uh, capital B as A minus the projector onto the uh, anti-symmetrized power of the Hilbert space. Okay, so this P asym is just identity uh, on two copies uh, minus uh, oh, yeah divided by two minus swap. Just operate operation unitary operation that flips uh, factors in the tensor uh, product of H. Okay, and. I have this capital B, the, uh, that will be like important in the rest of the talk, so remember that. <coughs> and uh, from previous lemma, or previous result from previous transparency, I can uh, actually show that when, uh, so I take two copies, uh, I mean two states, row one and row two, I compute expectation value of this capital B, and whenever it's positive, Okay, then I can conclude that both states row one and row two uh, uh, are, co uh, are are correlated. 
Okay? So that's like the, the, one of the main results of, uh, of my work. I mean, the, the thing is, why, why I have such A? Okay? The question is why I have such A in all those cases and in many other cases. So you, you constructed the set of M by the yeah, job by but I, 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 I gave you five examples, five concrete examples of states uh, at the beginning of the talk, uh, and why in all those cases I have such M, uh, such A. Uh, so, uh, so that's the fact. Just remember that. That's the, the main result, one of the main results. So. Uh, so actually there is a part of the story I did not talk about so far. Uh, uh, sorry, how much time do I have? Oh. Oh. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Oh, that's, that's cool. <laughs> okay, but I, I, I mean, it goes so slow. I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, so, so the part... It more eigen time than the other. Okay. Uh, at least you are not so bored. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so A. Uh, so, so, so the part of the story is uh, you've got a symmetric group uh, K that acts on your Hilbert space, and this class M is actually an orbit uh, uh, of this group through some particular state, say zero, <coughs> uh, that has the, the following property, which is important. I mean, for an important property. That is, um, when I take two copies of this say zero, then uh, that's well the vector in this uh, two, uh, two fold symmetrization of H. Okay, I can treat this space as a representation of the group K. So whenever those two th that two co uh, well two copies of psi. Uh, zero generates some irreducible representation of k, okay, uh, which I denote by uh, h tilde. Then this operator a capital A is given by the following expression. So uh, I just uh, take the projector onto the symmetrization uh, of h. I subtract the projector. Uh, onto this H tilde. Uh, okay, so this is some group. Uh, I mean, this is that's a group theoretic uh, construction. Okay, so maybe let me give you exa the simplest example uh, wh when it works. I mean, so I just have SU2. Yeah, SU2 that acts uh, or on spin. One representation, okay? So this is, uh, oh, oh, yeah, it's been so, so it's just, um, uh, so it's just, uh, uh, yeah, spin, spin, one, uh, spin one representation. So, so spin one, uh, uh, spin, yeah. So. Uh, Metrization of spin one uh, just decomposes onto say spin two, uh, yeah, plus spin one ones, uh, no, uh, spin zero. Sorry, spin zero. Okay, so so just trivial representation. Okay, so this uh, that's my uh, that's my edge. Uh, so uh, this is my edge tilde. Okay, I, I start with some product state, I don't know. I start with some highest weight state, uh, state with the fixed, uh, with the maximal value of spin z uh, projector. So th uh, that's my HW and projector onto this guy, okay, that would be my A. In the simplest case, uh, so, but this construction works in a much more general sense. <coughs> so you somehow represent these correlations by the symmetry group. Exactly. The symmetry group takes care of what is correlated, what is not correlated. Exactly. I mean, in, in those cases, at least in those cases I, I showed you so far. 
uh, yeah, but the, uh, so, so this is somehow the justification for the presence of this capital A. But when we go back to the standard definition of correlations of two subsystems, can you always find a group? No, group? I, I don't think so. And I, I, I have also like other examples of, I mean, which are of interest for physicists, uh, like from entanglement theory, uh, where, uh, when the, the, the class of pure states uh, it's not actually yeah, an orbit of a group, okay? So... But the crucial observation here was that in all these interesting classes which were enumerated there, uh, this is the case. Yeah. So in all these cases, this correlation, which are defined in a completely different way, can be defined with the help of, with the help of this particular construction. Yeah. But there is always a group. There is always a group. Yeah, so but... Uh, Keep in mind that I have, I mean, that those results are, are somehow more general uh, because, uh, I mean, I, I can always like, pick some projector uh, A, I mean, some projector A, and I can define my class. So, I mean, when, uh, whenever some physicists come to me and tell, okay, this is interesting class of my pure states, I mean, for some reason maybe, and uh, if I can find this capital A, then I can apply my criteria. Yes, because the formulation with A is general. The only condition is that, that this class is, is determined by the fact that this double expectation value on this A bench. But it's in all cases which he considers, this, this, this A, the, the, the existence of such an A is guaranteed by the fact that, this is, uh, that, that, that you can use group, some group, symmetric group to, 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 to identify this correlation. So, Okay, in all those cases I, I mentioned, uh, expression for this A, uh, I mean, is explicit. I mean, I have explicit expressions for this A. I mean, they're lengthy, so I, I have it at the end of the presentation. After the talk, if you want to look at it, you can. Okay, but I don't go to show them now. Uh, but the, the thing is, I mean, they're explicit in the, and can be used in, like, com in some concrete computations. And also, they will be used uh, when I... Uh, discuss those typical properties of correlations. I mean, this, this A will be useful. So, but that will happen in, say, five minutes. Can I ask a question? Sure. Which will bring us down to the problem relevant for this very physical problem. Is this so that this whole structure applies only to the basic systems which are not interacting? Um, the spins are not interacting. So, uh, so the, 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 the whole, this story, the, the whole story is kind of... Because a correlation, this relation of a correlation to symmetry is in some sense really simple. Uh, okay, so, so sir, I, uh, I would say that this is, uh, the, this notion of correlations, at least in this talk, is so-called, I mean, it would be kinematical. Of course. Okay, so it's even, I mean, you can add some dynamics there, okay, some Hamiltonian or some completely positive uh, map, and you can ask the question whether you stay inside the set yeah, of correlations or outside. The definition of a correlation by symmetry breaks down in the interacting system. No. 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 no, there's no time here. So, uh, I think I, I, I can address your question. Why so the symmetry is broken? Then then later. Later. Right. Suppose I have two systems, two spin systems, right, uh, which are interacting, yeah. and then, then if they are interacting, there is always a parameter there, which tells me that one of these interacting systems might be symmetric under the rotation group, and then when I change this parameter, it stops. Uh, so it goes from uh, paramagnetic to the ferromagnetic. So my, my definition no, of the correlation is on the parameter. Not on so, the sir, is that your similar or mine? The because interactions do not change in the system which goes from paramagnetic to ferromagnetic. That state. has nothing to do with the dynamics. This is a pure. That there is nothing to do with the dynamics if the system goes from a ferromagnetic. The notion of interaction has something to do with the yeah, dynamics. Yeah, but there, there is no in dynamics in when the system goes from paramagnetic to the ferromagnetic state. The symmetry is being broken. And my question is if I Some can... symmetry is being broken. Yeah, so if... Like he just describes this scene. There is no dynamics yet so far. He just wants to understand static situation. 
in different setups. So let him. I have it. And okay, this okay. I'm having nothing in this. I'm just trying to understand whether this notion of a correlation yes. is having anything with the correlation in a real physics. Some, some, it has some. something to do with it. Absolutely. And, and, and that is my question. And, 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 and if I'm, if I'm not permitted in this democratic world to ask this question, well, then it's so not the answer mine. is some. some but that has nothing so to do with the physics. We can also discuss it after the seminar. Well, I will discuss it. The seminar is for everybody, or there are some minorities. Yes, but it's mainly for the speaker. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, that is wrong. No, I think, I think Lukas is worried because if you have interactive fermionic system, then the, the basis of Slater determinants yeah. is not adequate. Yeah, I mean, the true states are a mixture. It is adequate. You must have that out of which states this Slater determinants. Okay. You, you have to, to, to start from some. Yeah, of course. Uh, right. The only question is whether your basis is just a crazy mixture of those later yeah. determinants, okay. whether this condition yeah. apply as well. Yes. So, so can, I, can I move on? So I just want to summarize what we've got. Whenever we've got such capital A uh, that defines our class of pure states, uh, we end up with the following criterion for correlations as defined by, uh, in the previous part of the talk. So it is manifest continuous. Uh, by construction, in all those cases, it is invariant under the direction of the relevant symmetry group. Uh, so what is also nice, it doesn't depend upon the dimensionality of my uh, starting Hubert space. In all those cases, I have different Hubert spaces. They can be finite or different dimensional. Uh, Another nice aspect is that, okay, we can fix row one and optimize over row two. I mean, this criterion, okay? So, 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 so we can, from that, uh, by, tra uh, by tracing, row, by fixing row two and just changing row one, uh, we can we end up with linear witness for uh, row one, okay? Uh, so, but in the rest of the talk, I will, uh, I will just plug the same state row in both um, arguments and I will study this function trace row, row in terms of our row with B and so it is expressed just as expectation value of, <coughs> of capital A and in this situation when can I like, compute this part with anti-symmetrization it is expressed in terms of purity uh, of the state, so you, you've got some kind of interplay between <coughs> correlations and purity, as discussed. I mean, well, I mean one of the places when it was discussed is the speaker by Klaus from 1998. Uh, but that was in the context of entanglement. Uh, th this context is more general. Okay, so now I move to the, the study of typical properties of correlations on the set of isospectral density matrices. So, uh, remember the picture, we've got th the set of all states, like it's here, uh, we have this class of non-correlated states. Uh, we have, uh, inside the set, we have uh, the set of states which have the fixed spectrum, okay? Uh, well, just uh, every, density matrix, uh, every density matrix can be diagonalized by unitary operation. So, uh, so this is like the class of states that, that have the, the, same, the same spectrum. What is important and which is visible on this picture is that obviously you cannot read off correlation out of the spectrum. So correlation for the spectra property, yeah. okay? So there are matrices which are with the same spectrum which are correlated and not correlated. So the question yeah. is how many of them, of the same among the matrices of the same spectrum, how many in this quotation mark? Yeah. So uh, one, one more point is that uh, on the set of isospectral density matrices, I have the action of the unitary group on H, uh, which is transitive. Ah, one thing I I'd like to mention, I, for, for this part, I focus on finite dimensional Hubert spaces. Just, uh, yeah, mm, I, I have to do it. Uh, okay, so I studied like the 
Well, the, the question, okay, uh, I have some measure on the space of isospectral density matrices that comes from the hair measure on my group, okay? This is some kind of, of uniform measure on the space. Uh, and I ask what fraction of those states are correlated. Uh, so, what is the motivation? Uh, so, 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 one motivation is our co correlated states in all those settings uh, generic to some sense. I mean, when I fix the spectrum. Uh, uh, and also other, like, robust and the perturbation. So, if, if I act with some random unitary operator uh, on, on some fixed density metrics, will I end up in a uh, correlated state or not? Uh, okay, so, so, so some previous approaches, uh, I mean, people studied this problem in the context of entanglement, but they were not focused on set of isospectral density matrices, they, consider, they, they considered other uh, ensembles of density matrices, uh, also I, I quote, quote, quote Zuzkowski and also studies of Shalek, I mean there are different there's a whole zoo of uh, possible ensembles. I, uh, yeah, I focus on on the well, the set of isospectral density matrices in, in this talk at least. So what are the results? Uh, so I I fix my class M, okay, and I assume that it is given by this uh, operator capital A, capital A, this one. <laughs> uh, Okay, uh, and uh, I asked the question, how many states from a give, uh, given states of dense matrices are correlated? Uh, so I have some parameters that depend upon, uh, well, my class, M, or this operator A. Uh, also, they depend upon the spectrum. Uh, yeah, so what is the result? Uh, Whenever, so I, I have fixed omega, uh, which is the set of isospectral density matrices. I, I have its purity, uh, or I can compute purity of states from the set. So this is just a simple expression. So uh, whenever purity exceeds ball delta, some critical purity, which is written here, in terms of parameters of my class M, Okay, so this x is just the ratio between the dimension of the image of A and the dimension of the whole space, the uh, symmetri symmetrized space H. So whenever uh, my purity exceeds by delta some critical purity, measure of states which are correlated uh, is essentially uh, almost equal to 1. I mean, it is bounded by 1 minus some term, which depends on this delta quadratically, and it depends on, I mean, there are some factors here which I, I mean, don't want to discuss them at this point. It, uh, it scales uh, exponentially with n. n is my, well, the dimension of the uh, Hilbert space. And I want to take sort of a limit when n goes to infinity. So, so, so it goes to zero. Okay, so that's like the, I mean, I read the equation, but I, I want like this discuss it also on the picture. So uh, here I have the well, uh, the purity of uh, the set of isospectral density matrices on this x-axis. Okay, it goes from one over n to one, uh, and this blue line is the lower bound for uh, the measure of, uh, for the friction of correlated states in this omega. So it looks some, somewhat like that. Here I have the critical uh, purity, so to say. Uh, on the scale of 1 over n, it goes from 0 to, uh, to 1. Here I cannot say anything, so, so I can bound it uh, just from above by 0, it's trivial bound. But the, like, the, the, the actual behavior of this fraction would be somehow like that. So, so my approach, I mean, cannot address directly this, this region, okay? Well, I can try to prove, uh, um, yeah, to push it harder, but I will, don't 
want to I don't want to discuss it now. Uh, Excuse me. So, uh, yeah. What do you mean by isospectral, actually? Because so uh, I just how can uh, the purity change? Sure. The isospectral. Uh, okay. So here is the answer. Uh, or maybe maybe yeah. So some of uh, So I uh, so the thing is I can change omega, okay, by changing its spectrum, okay. Uh, but then I have a function of the spectrum, which is the purity. Okay. So the thing is, uh, this fraction on this plot, which is on the next slide, uh, it concerns the fraction of the, the set of uh, or fixed omega. Uh, it concerns fixed omega. But I can have many omegas which have the same purity. So I have the same estimate for each of those omegas. I don't know if I. Yeah. Okay. I understand that. But how can it work the other way? I can have a different uh, I mean, it's just uh, so. So, in order to do that, you have to pick some measure on the space of dense matrices, which are maybe invariant under the action of unitary group. Okay, and you can maybe integrate over, uh, yeah, over, this, uh, over the spectrum, which uh, over set of isospectral density matrices, which have the same uh, purity. Okay, you will, you will end up. Uh, yeah, with a distribution, uh, so so you you will end up with a. Uh, well, what is the question? Because I am lost. Okay, well, but I am answering it. I guess. <laughs> okay, is it, maybe we can discuss this later. Yeah, okay. Okay. Sure. So not, so not yeah. also a question, not the answer. Well, so I'm just thinking the that if it's intelligent answer should apply to all possible questions. Question. So what was the question? So I was just sort of thinking naively that if the density matrices are isospectral, it means all the eigenvalues are the same. No. no, I suspect all the eigenvalues of two matrices which are isospectral. If you have two ma uh, matrices, they are called isospectral if all the eigenvalues are the same. Okay? Yes, so yes, I'm sorry, it's not <laughs> that, 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 that the same uh, value 1 over n for each matrix, but that there are pairs of corresponding. So one can be trans uh, transformed into another by a unitary transformation. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Look at here. So, so, so what is the question now? So then, isn't the purity the sum of the squares of those things? Yeah. 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 And so, if they're isospectral, then the values are the same, no. and the sum of the squares are the same. No, they are not the same. Okay. Well, let's uh, not go into that. Okay, we'll talk. discuss this later, I, I hope. Okay, so uh, what are the technical uh, tools I use to, to, to prove this? Lower bound. Uh, I guess Karol Zhuzhkovsky was talking about concentration of measure phenomenon last week, so some of you may know, uh, know it just, uh, already. So I simply. Oh, so I, I understand. So the question was whether the purity of, a, of two of two of two isospectral you know, matrices is the same. Yes, it is the same. That's why the only <laughs> yeah. the only uh, parameter which is on the, uh, this yeah. this. this Parallel axis is the purity. Yes. It characterizes the, 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 the whole set of matrices with the same spectrum. Yeah, for all no. the matrices. Yeah. It's so it's a valid it's, to, it's to really, study this. Of course, of course, of course. Yeah. However, the speaker, not more than one, but several times, claimed otherwise. Of uh, course, not really controlling himself very well. well the, no, that's okay. why Piotr had okay. to do I don't Okay, that. maybe so that's I go <laughs> say and then there are different uh, purities. Because from this figure you can think that you have the given omega, but you have different purities. Yeah, yeah. For yeah the, that's my, that's the impression. That's right. Very theoretical. Which is omega. Ah, ah, omega. Okay. So, uh, so, uh, so for, for, for each purity, purity I have different omega. So, I mean, ah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Ah, I so the x axis is the omega. Yes. That's why it's just the purity. Or it's just the purity of omega. Yes, purity of omega. Purity of Purity of omega. Purity of omega. So, 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 so the technical it looks like the, this plot is uncorrelated to its physical uh, Okay, so, uh, uh, so what I do, I just take my function f of rho, which was, uh, well, trace rho tensor rho d. Uh, okay, I average this guy over the unitary group, 
okay? And I plug some kind of uh, uh, large, large deviation estimates for the measure. Which, uh, yeah. So which comes from the well, concentration of measure phenomenon. Uh, so surprisingly, from a rather simple criterion uh, for those correlations, I've got a rather detailed information about typical behavior of correlations for fixed uh, omega. Okay, it should be very soft. It should be omega here as well. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, well, some just some comments. I mean, it is known that uh, at least in many cases you actually have uh, a ball that consists of non-correlated uh, states around maximal mixed state. Okay, so, so my approach would not give you the, uh, the answer about like the radius of this ball. It, it just, I can approximate this uh, radius from, uh, fr from above. Okay, so unfortunately I cannot discuss this problem with those methods. Uh, okay, and in many cases, I mean in those cases I considered uh, this n goes to infinity in some, say, limit of many number of large number of particles. Okay. Uh, also, this x uh, goes to one in the limit of, uh, well, in some suitable, say, thermodynamic limit or some limit of, well, number of constituencies of the system go, uh, goes to infinity. So, uh, essentially, this p critical goes to zero or gets closer to 1 over n uh, and above this value almost all states uh, uh, are correlated which I mean I mean which is quite surprising because my class of non-correlated states uh, was defined by simple quadratic uh, condition so by simple like estimates from measure concentration and those criteria I've got I've got a rather detailed Information. Ah, oh. okay. I forgot about this part. Okay, but this is just uh, just one slide. Uh, so I can try to generalize. Uh, well, the setting for uh, well uh, for the case when uh, this uh, class M is given by uh, expectation uh, by expression which is multilinear uh, in psi. Okay. So uh, previously I have two, I got two, here I've got arbitrary number of uh, uh, well, k. Uh, so I can essentially reproduce similar, similar result. Whenever I've got my class given by uh, this equation, I, I consider this, this V that acts on many copies, on k copies of my system. Uh, and uh, I have similar uh, expression as before. That is, I, I have, say, k density matrices, row 1, row 2, up to row k. Uh, I, can, uh, I compute expectation value of the product of them on V. And whenever it's positive, I conclude that all of them are correlated. <coughs> so i just like to mention that one can, with the usage of this formalism, uh, produce a well, uh, that can detect so-called genuine multi-power chart and entanglement. And uh, I don't, I mean, I can discuss after what, it, what it is after the seminar. Uh, in, that's a particular example of a situation when this class of states is not an orbit of the, uh, not an orbit uh, of some group. But nevertheless, I can, I can uh, think of such A that defines for me, this class of genuine, I mean, yeah, with help of which I can uh, detect genuine multiplied uh, entanglement. Uh, I can also construct witnesses of so called Schmidt rank for uh, the problem of bipartite entanglement. Uh, also, in all those cases I considered during the present talk, I can, uh, I can, well, I have uh, the same class, but I can look at it with the help of operators that are with different 
uh, operators that act on different uh, different number of copies of my state. Okay, so I will end up with also criteria uh, for correlations that are expressed uh, by like, taking many copies of my state. Okay, so for for those classes I considered during the talk. Uh, so. Uh, that's the part, I mean, I'm about to end the, the talk, so, so, so what I have shown, I, I gave you a new description of like polynomial conditions on various classes of uh, quotation marks, non-correlated pure states. Uh, from them, I, uh, I, uh, I constructed a, a correlation criteria, which are actually new. <laughs> up to the problem of entanglement, which was discussed before by Mintert and Buchleiter. Also, Mike, who took part in that. Uh, okay, I, I use those uh, witnesses, those, those criteria, to, to, to study typical properties of correlations on the set of isospectral density matrices. Uh, right? Uh, so, what are plans for further research? I'd like to study also coherent free states, optical Gaussian states. This amounts to study different groups, which are maybe more interested, interesting from a mathematical point of view, because uh, they're like non-compact. There are some functional analytical details there that has that have to be understood. Uh, also, there is an important issue, and we already have some results in that direction. That is, instead of subtracting the projector onto that. And the symmetric power of, of two copies of my space, I can subtract some other thing, okay? And maybe some smaller, in some sense, term, which can give you me better as estimates, okay? So we have a way, like to, like, to try to optimize uh, the criteria at least in this by part, I, uh, by two copy setting. Uh, also, the dream would be. You uh, maybe for like fixed m, so so like separable states or uh, certain determinants. Maybe you have like close hierarchy of criteria uh, that are that is based on uh, those multilinear witnesses. It, 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 it depends a little bit what you mean by close. So, so I mean like uh, I have uh, the uh, mm, the sequence of conditions. And I know that it would like converge to my set, so that would be my hope. But uh, it's in general like, uh, difficult questions. Okay, okay. And whenever I, I improve in this part or in this part, I, I get sharper estimates on the generic properties of correlations on particular set of isospectral density matrices. Okay. Uh, so I managed to finish on time. Thank you. that almost all states are correlated, which is uh, sort of obvious. Because no correlation is a very particular situation. It's like something is equal to zero, and we have the whole range. For pure states. So here, the main statement is that it depends on the purity. You have almost pure states. Almost all of them are, let's say, correlated. And the more mixed they are, they are likely to be uncorrelated. Basically, if you are in the blue, inside the yes, object, blue. it's blue. If you are outside, then those yellowish parts are larger and larger. Yes, yes. yes. That depends on the... Independently of the choice of the one of the five fields. Mm -hmm. So this is nice. of auto correlation, right? Yeah. Because you take row cross row. It's yeah. some sort of auto correlation usually. Yeah. Yeah. Some sort of what? Um, auto correlation, because you don't oh. take two different density matrices. Oh. Uh, yeah, but I can plug the same. Yeah, you should have the same. Right? So, and also I can uh, optimize, I can pick one and optimal, uh, optimize of, over the, the other. Okay, so to, to construct linear witnesses. Yeah, I have a very last question. Uh, so, the criteria uh, for correlation based on witnesses seem to have one advantage, namely, uh, they pretty much look like expectation values of True. of row on, on some kind of observer. So uh, that's an advantage, sure. First of all, so yeah. Does that not seem to be the case if you take products of row? So, uh, uh, well, that's true. Uh, 
Uh, that's true. Yet, I mean, I'm not an expert of experimentalist, but I was talking to Magda Stobinska like two weeks ago, and she's. Yeah. You got a choice of an expert. Uh, so she said, like Macherevich. Right. Okay. She's also not experimental. Yeah. Okay, but she was talking to some guys from, I don't know, uh, London or Oxford, and they said, I mean, I mean that it's possible to to generate uh, in some uh, or many copies. Okay. So that's one answer. And then instead of doing uh, tomography of a quantum state, you just. Uh, uh, do the combined measurement. Okay, so that's that's one part of the answer. Another uh, is that, uh, as I discussed, you can we can fix uh, one law and then uh, construct with, from this method uh, linear witness. Uh, yeah. Well, in general, it's also the fact that the measuring of the invariants and observation, all this, all this criteria are based on that. But you need more copies, and this is the measure. Can I ask a question? Suppose I I mean, this is all fantastic. I, I enjoy it very much, but let's consider. Is it conceivable that all this procedure can be brought down to the earth of discussing a simple case where we presumably know these quantum correlations, this is a set of non-interacting fermions. Speedless fermions. This is something extremely trivial. We know what is the, what are the, let's put them in a box. So we know exactly what are the wave functions, what are the states, what is the Kimbrough space. We can calculate so can whatever you want, right? And uh, particularly, what, what, I mean, there's a particular fact that the correlation function, which is written in the thousands of books, which tells you that the, the, the which describes the Fermi hole, right? Uh, uh, would it be nice to know what is the witness operator for this case? So, uh, but, or it's not correlated or so what? In the case of, okay, sorry. Please, but you are uh, probably, because I think that in the case of indistinguishable particles, there are two kinds of correlations. One comes from the, from the fact that the particles are yeah. not distinguishable, mm -hmm. and this is some kind of trivial correlation, okay? Because it is just uh, in the case of the world is built on it, so I would restrain myself but from calling it true. But if you take the uh, no, I said the determinant, you have some. Use the but let me, let me finish. If you take the Slater determinant, you have some correlations, obviously, between particles there. Yeah. But then you can make you can uh, make a state which is a superposition of Slater determinants, yeah. and then the correlations are much much more non-trivial, and this is the difference. And okay, so all, 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 all these yeah. measures are just additional correlations. <laughs> yes. All this, all this was yes. devoted to other these additional correlations. So, yeah, right. so, so yeah. yeah. this part that I enjoy very much his answer because I can continue. So imagine we now switch from a ferment. Okay, let's take these ferments. And this, and that's, since we are now permitted to take a superposition of a, a determinants. Okay? Let's but we were at the beginning. No, no, no. <coughs> the beginning was one hour ago, you cannot expect me to remember what was that. Uh, the, the, then I take a particular combination, superposition of the, of the, of the, of the letter determinant, which is a laughing function. Which is, okay? And I take, uh, 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 in other words, I take a two piece of fermionic systems which are which, which have a quantum polyfact, oh, integer oh, quantum polyfact, yeah. right? <laughs> and I get them, and then I cut them in half by a piece of, I mean, by a piece of scissors, right? And I mean, I know exactly what it means of a correlation in the system in the old-fashioned language, and the, and the question is. Are the system are, are they are they are the are the physical example of a quantum hole liquid like a Latin fluid in some materials 
Is it correlated okay. system according to this definition or not? So, yeah. okay, so I, I don't think that you, this you, 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 you said I can take, I can take the combination yes. of this later and then. And this is about this correlation. So I would say that for distinguishable particles. No, they are not distinct, they are fermions. Okay. We are not so talking, need, don't so change need some, the subject. Okay, so you need some additional quantum number which distinguish the, which split your system to, to subsystems. No, I, I for the the, I'm not body. splitting it anymore. But I just take the combination to define the, the no, then I don't split anything because this will be getting complicated. So we can do it much simpler. I take a simple combination yes. of the Slater determinants so which gives a lot of function. Is the system correlated? You said no, that the sure. system is yeah, not Yeah, of course, sir. So, this is, yeah. so, yeah. so, yeah. so yeah. this is the answer. So, is what true. would be the witness there? Oh. Yeah, so uh, you assume that your state is pure, okay? Uh, no, yes, yes. Yeah, so, so, you, this. This. so you took uh, com linear combination of slated yeah, determinants, right? So, so the, thi the nice thing is that I can give you, I mean, okay, I've got those ugly formulas, but okay. <laughs> But, uh, but I, I, I have this operator that acts on two copies that tells you, in this case, precisely, it's not a criterion, uh, it's just detection. Okay, yes or not? So the answer would be probably. It would be nice yes. to see yes. a real physical example yes. in the system yes. which are not trivial. Uh, yes. Where uh, this difference yes. can be quantified, right? Yes. But, 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 so, but, you need, but still, you need some additional quantity. Something, yes. something really but, physical. Okay, I mean, uh, it wasn't there. Yeah. Right. It wasn't there because 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 you have to define what do you mean by it. Then yes. you can check. Exactly. You can define what what do you mean by correlation, and then you and can this check. This is what I have done. So you need yeah. additional quantum sure. number which which uh, distinguish the subset is uh, yes. the, the, where the correlation is defined. For example, in the Cooper pairs, you have the, this additional number is uh, momentum. Of the okay. And then you have the correlation that uh, the two particles has opposite yeah. So you need some additional quantum number in the case of indistinguishable particles. In the case of distinguishable, you don't need no, 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 it's not, not the momentum, but I understand the previous theory. Let's be yeah. yeah. talking different things. Okay, I, 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 I cancel my questions. No more okay. questions. Uh, so I, mean, I don't uh, agree with Mutas in the no, sense no, that yeah. it would be nice to have some yeah. physical example. Yes. Of this you have to have a thought. No, you can't. I will give a thought. The same. I never doubted that there are physical examples. Okay, so I think this I is. Mean, I, I haven't seen a good point to stop.